We have traveled all over Kenya to find hard-working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the help they need to improve their farms, get better yields, and build profitable businesses. We will see how farmers from across the region can benefit from our experts' advice while also learning from each other in so many ways. Join us on these journeys and share in the farmers' experiences as they shape up their shambas. Karibu to the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Welcome to Shamba Shape Up. This week we are in Lemuru, home to the butter shoe factory since 1939. Hey, Tony. Did you know that the people in Limuru are the least shoeless people in Kenya? Aha! And Karo, did you know that the name Limuru comes from Ma Ilmur, meaning donkey's dung? Oh, really? Then these Limuru donkeys must be very famous. Today, we are visiting one such farm that occasionally uses donkeys and border borders. Yes, and we are going to see what we can do about that, aren't we, Karo? Well, we will see what happens. Let's go! Let's go! Ahoy! Limur, just a stone's throw away from Nairobi, is famous for its butter shoe factory, but also its donkeys. This week, we are visiting John Chegekubai and his family on the 11.5 acres farm in the Ngati village in Limuru. When John Shege started farming in 1955, he started off with cows. Today, the farm has diversified and his daughter Hannah and daughter-in-law Porcelain work with him. Each has her own speciality. But at 83 years old, the Mze is still the master here. Ah. Hello. Hello. Hey. How are you? She is there. Oh, 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 How are you? The father of this house. Okay. Muse. Muse. Hello. 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 Yeah. Pleasure to meet Hello. you. Hello. Where are you come from? <laughs> ah, we come from <laughs> Nairobi. Mm -hmm. Shamba Shepa. Okay. You I come yeah. to shape up your shamba to make sure that your produce goes high, you get more milk. Mm. So, Hannah, yes. maybe if I come to you, mm. uh, how, how, how does the farm work? Mm. Here, mm. we have cows. Okay. And my dad here loves cows. Okay. Ah. So, he's the one who is responsible for the cows. So, there are certain mm. structures in the shamba. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm. Mm. Uh -huh. uh, we have chicken. Okay. And I'm the one who takes care of the chicken. Here is my sister in love. Mm -hmm. She's porcelain. Yes. Mm -hmm. She has uh, several greenhouses. How does it feel to work together? We find it so good and advantageous and saving time and energy. Because if I'm not around, Anna will take care or maybe go and see how the greenhouses are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She can still assist the dad. If I'm around, I still do the same. So we work as a team. Mm -hmm. yeah. Our farmers have found the perfect way to divide the tasks, but they still have challenges and are keen to increase their production. No worries, we are here to help them with our experts. Wow, Carol, what do you think of the farmers? This is going to be quite a shape up. Yes. I love them. They look so enthusiastic and ready to learn. Yeah, so let's not waste time, let's get to work. Let's pitch our tent and get to work. So, we have an expert on how to feed the cows better and make them more productive. And an expert on preventing pests and diseases in the greenhouses. Cows are Mze's passion. He just loves them. He has four Frisian cows and a calf. Each day, he gets over 30 liters of milk from three of his cows and sells it to the dairy cooperative in Limuru. Although Mze knows all there is to know about cows, we brought in our expert from Coopers, Dr. Josphat Muturi, to see if we can improve on the cow's milk production. Mze, your cows are looking so healthy they and so like good. Mm. Huh? Uh, they are like me. They are like you. <laughs> Healthy and strong. You are a very hard-working farmer. 
How long have you been having these cows? I was started in 1955. That's when you started Apart keeping cows? Mm. Uh, uh, during the emergency? During the emergency. That was a long time ago. Are yeah. you born by that time? No. Oh, I wish I was. I'm like a, your grandfather, my Gra <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So, Mr. Cheke, I've looked at your cows and uh, they look very good. The genetics are good, the breed is good. But I think we need to improve on uh, nutrition. Yes. I've actually looked at uh, the fodder and uh, the material that they're also giving the cows. Mm -hmm. We need some improvement. So oh, one of the most important things is that the cows also need a balanced diet. So of key importance is energy, the proteins, vitamins, water, and also minerals. Aha. Yeah. Now, Mr. Chege, what do you feed your cows? Maybe a glass. My baby. The missy, and this is uh, vegetables, oh. and chakula uh, for unga. I've actually looked at uh, the main fodder, which is the maize stocks or, or stovers, and it looks deficient in terms of energy. I've also looked at the cabbages, the leftovers. We might not be able to provide the right um, uh, nutritional mix for the cow, so we need to improve on that. Which minerals should Mr. Chege use to okay. supplement his fodder? Okay, we will recommend uh, Macri Super. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what happened there? <laughs> that comes from, that comes from so many years of experience. <laughs> okay, so how should it? Let's continue. Let's continue, okay. Yeah. Okay, we recommend uh, Macri Super, which is a good mineral supplement that's well balanced to take care of the mineral requirements of a cow, dairy cow, yeah. as a lactating cow, yeah. to ensure that the cows can produce more milk. Now, we recommend that you give at least 200 grams per cow per day yeah. of these products. Yes. And we recommend what we call the ad rib. Uh -huh. You get a small box near the feeder, yes. you pour this uh, salt there, uh. and then the cow can lick on their own. Uh. Yeah. Macri Super doesn't just uh, improve uh, productivity, it just improves fertility of the cows. So you also see cows coming on heat at the right time, Yes. And you also see cows that are strong yes. and uh, having good uh, production, uh, daily production of milk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. What time do we? Okay. You give any time. Any time. Uh, and uh, we said at least 200 grams per cow per day, mm -hmm. especially the cows that are doing 20 liters and above. Mm -hmm. okay. But more important also is to ensure that the cows are also well fed. It's not just about mineral, it's not going to be a silver bullet. So mm -hmm. you also need to look at the other ration. That's mm -hmm. the fodder. I mean the pastures that the cows is feeding on mm -hmm. to ensure that you have the right balance. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The other product? Diamond V, mm -hmm. which is very important. Yeah, this is a Diamond V mm -hmm. that helps the cow yeah. to improve digestion. Yeah. So with your uh, fodder here, yeah. and use Diamond V, yeah. at least 14 grams mm -hmm. per day. Mm -hmm. Okay. So okay. how should he use mm -hmm. the Diamond V? You only use 14 grams. Yes. One eating spoon per day. Uh, then you mix with your ration or maybe your dairy meal yes. on a daily basis uh -huh. and you're going to see very good results. Within two to three days, you see a lot of results. Uh -huh. And what you get is that um, because of good digestion, you have less wastage. Uh -huh. So you have less dung and also the dung is also very fine. I don't know whether you've seen some cows when you feed, uh -huh. you find a lot of grass in the dung. Uh -huh. So with the amount V, you forget about that. So we can use when, 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 um, when, um, when you're milking, milking, yeah, in the morning you mix with your dairy meal. Yes. Yeah. Uh, can I use to to, to cow which is the dry or wamazua pekeaki? You can use to any cow, uh. lactating or even dry cow, yes. or even for the calves also. Even so, dama. Even cows, yes. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> years ago, Mzee's daughter-in-law, Pocilin, decided to go into capsicum and tomato production. She now has four greenhouses of capsicums and one greenhouse of tomatoes. She's been doing very well, but now Pocilin faces some challenges. Our expert, Jeremiah Duku from Osho, is here to help her out. But first, let's find out what made Pocilin, a secondary school teacher, go into farming. Okay, I realize, yes, I'm going and I'm getting old. Oh. Very soon I'll no, retire. No, 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 no. We don't talk about <laughs> old age. So I needed, yeah. at least I needed something to add value to my life. Mm -hmm. And of course, a, a different income. Why did you just decide capsicum? Mm, it's not a common crop 
in this area. Mm -hmm. And once you grow it, there are special people who need it. We have tourists yeah. to make the salads. Mm -hmm. So we get customers, although we are a bit interior, they come to buy from us at a lower price and then they transport all the way to Mombasa. I'm happy that you went your way to look for the market mm. uh, before you, you venture in this type of farming. Uh, in this kind of farming, you never go wrong. This is what we call uh, the backward uh, farming. You look for the market first mm -hmm. and then you do the farming mm -hmm. because most of the farmers look for the market after they do the farming. Uh, I want to congratulate uh, Porcelain for choosing a high value crop. A high value crop, we talk of cucumber, we talk of capsicums, we talk of strawberries and tomatoes. Mm -hmm. Greenhouse, she's on season all through the whole year she's been on market. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not like she's waiting for the rain, uh, the season, now it's cold, now it's hot, no. The water does not evaporate very fast because you see the house is covered. True. Yeah. And then after that, I, when it's too hot, the plants still remain cool. Mm -hmm. They don't dry like the crops that I grow outside. Okay. They remain at least green. Mm -hmm. uh, as much as you say the greenhouse is good, mm -hmm. it has advantages and all that. You've, mm -hmm. said, uh, you, you've been experiencing some mm -hmm. problems here and there. Mm -hmm. What are they? I don't know their real names, mm -hmm. but you see like this one. Yes. The stem is getting dry, and so meaning it is not going to grow further. So no more fruits. Uh -huh. Production is low. Uh -huh. That's a challenge. Uh, the, the stem rot. It is a challenge that is mostly in the greenhouse because of the heat, because of the humidity. Remember, it's very hot here compared to outdoor. So you see your capsicums are rotting on the stems, uh, and. Uh, because now the foods and water cannot go past where the rot is, uh, it's the subsequent death of that particular crop at that point. So what we do, we do a, a, what we call a swab. A swab is uh, you come with a product called PAL, uh, you spray or you wipe out the molds. There's some, uh, there's some molds on that stem, you wipe it out, we call it the swabbing. Uh, when you do that and then you do a cover spray of PAL. When you do that cover spray of PAL and you repeat after 10 days, uh, and then the most important point, uh, when you're doing this, you make sure that you you do your roll-ups. It is very important to ensure that aeration, free air flow in a greenhouse. I still find some leaves are coiling themselves, coming together. They look wrinkly. Mm, wrinkly. Mm. And they are not green. Mm. So I'm not getting any fruits for harvest in future. Mm -hmm. Uh, another challenge that uh, capsicum farmer will experience is thrips. Thrips are pe sucking pests uh, that will be seen mostly when the sun is high, mm -hmm. like right now. Uh, thrips will be seen on the flowers and they manifest themselves or they do the thrips damage on leaves and fruits. So uh, when you have thrips damage, uh, you'll see your leaves, the fresh leaves are curling. Uh, they are not straight, they are not healthy. The production is low. Because your water uh, from your uh, from your crop is being sucked by this pest. Dynamo is a is a is a, is a product uh, mm -hmm. that we we Osho Chemicals uh, is a solution to you for against drips. Mm -hmm. uh, dynamo, you you put uh, three grams of Dynamo in 20 liters of water and you do a cover spray. When you do that, you repeat that after uh, 10 days, and all your drips are gone. I find some ashes. There are many with ashes, like that one near Jeremy. Okay. Jeremy. Yes, Carol. What can you tell our farm? How can you help our farm? The major challenge is uh, the one that she's calling the ash. We call mm -hmm. that powder mildew. Uh, powder mildew is a challenge that comes due to humidity. We have water here through the drip irrigation and there's evaporation. So free airflow in your mm -hmm. greenhouse is very important. Mm -hmm. uh, ensure that in the morning at around 8 a.m., uh, do the roll-ups, the shutters put them up so that the hot air can get out, the cool air can get in. It's not like uh, it's, it's, it's so unflexible. Mm. Uh, you have to look at the weather. How is it today? Is it hot? Is it cold? But basically, you should allow free air to come into greenhouse. Mm. Remember also, irrigation is an important factor. Okay. You, you do your irrigation mm. at least one hour uh, mm. for your cups comes. You, you go Monday, uh, you skip, skip Tuesday, Tuesday okay. you go Wednesday, you skip mm -hmm. Thursday, mm -hmm. you go to Friday. Mm -hmm. This way, you're going to ensure that your, your, your greenhouse is not so wet. This is a preventive measure. Ah, so far, so good. So, remember, to stop stem rot, cover spray with pearl. To get rid of trips, use dynamo. And for powdery mildew, roll up the shutters of your greenhouse every morning so that the hot air goes out and the cool air comes in. But for now, we still have a lot of work to do right after the break. 
Welcome back to Shamba Shepherd. We are in the Ngati village in Limuru and you are visiting Mzai Chege and his family. We've seen how to feed the cows better and get more milk out of them and we've seen how to rid capsicum of diseases and pests. But we also want to find out how we can deworm Mzai's cough and transport the family's produce to the market. So, no time to waste. Let's get to work. Apart from his four fresh cows, of which one is a calf, Mzechege has a three-month-old calf. He wants to profit from the Cooper's expert's visit to check him out. Dr. Muturi's diagnostic is without appeal. The calf needs deworming. Now, when I look at that calf, I can tell you a lot. Just like our, you look at the color, look at the black color, yeah. It's kind of discoloration. Look at the hair coat, it's a bit rough. You mm -hmm. see? You look at the eyes, there's a lot of recrimination or ear tears eh, coming yes. out. And then the discharge also from uh, the muzzle. Mm -hmm. So I can tell you, Lily, the calf is not doing very well. So it has not been dewarmed? It has not been dewarmed. Mr. Chege, has the calf been dewarmed? Uh, no. Uh -huh. It's always important for the farmer to take the weight of the cow or the animal before giving it a warmer. Okay. In fact, I wanted to ask the question. Yeah. How would you, a whole cow, how yeah. would you tell the weight or even weigh the cow? No, there are two ways you can use uh, to weigh the weight of the cow. You can use a weighing bud, which you use uh, to do the estimate. You don't get the actual, but you get the estimate weight. And uh, you run this through the gut of the cow, around the shoulders, right? And then you can be able to take the actual weight of the cow. So the weight is uh, 100 kgs. 100 kgs? Yes. The other way is that you can take a tape measure or uh, any other measuring equipment. You run it through the gut and then you take the measurements. And once you take the measurements, you also have some body weight converter, which are selling coopers, which shows the number of centimeters you get and then you convert into weight. Now, once you know uh, the weight, then you know the dose. So you're going to buy the light quantity of Nilsen Super will help you to do the deworming. You can also use in lactating cows, in calves, and even in uh, pregnant animals. Mm -hmm. You only withdraw milk for 24 hours. After one month, the time of birth, you can start the first deworming. And then you can do it every month until the sixth month. After six months, then you can do it after every three months. And then when you're doing the first month, the second month, you can alternate. So you can use Nilsen uh, Super, or can also use Nephil Koso. There's some tabs, tablets, 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 yeah, tablets. yeah, yeah, which you can also use uh, for the calves also. Mm -hmm. Yeah, depending on the weight. So how does a farmer use these tablets? Yeah. For the cow to yeah. swallow. Yeah, yeah. For, a cow, for the cow no, to swallow. No, mm. there are two ways. Eh? Mm. You can crush the tablet and mix with some water. Mm -hmm. Or else you can also just break it and then you place it at the base of the tongue. Which can be tricky also sometimes. Mm -hmm. But the best is to crush it and mix it with water mm -hmm. to yeah. avoid choking the animal. Ah. She's also very dangerous, yeah. So, remember, in order to have healthy calves and productive cows, it's important to keep a record and deworm your cows every three months. Before we check on what Caro is doing, I decided to have a quick look at Anna's chicken. Mzee's daughter, Hannah, has 500 layer chicken, and she still wants more. Her chicken lay approximately 500 eggs a day, and once a week, she sells them in Wangigi Market, which is about 10 kilometers away. I went into the coop to see how she's faring. Whew. Wow. Lots of eggs in there. Look at all this. And you got all that, those few minutes were in there. Hannah, well done. I loved what I saw in there. So many chicken. And not, not so many. Yeah, you still want more. Yeah. And you've got also, these are layers. Yeah, this house is empty. I need more. You still need to add more in there. Yes. Uh -huh. And you still have got broilers. Yes, I have. And you're saying you don't have many. 
I don't have many. Look at all these eggs. Compared to my neighbor here. Oh, there's a neighbor with more. Yes. <laughs> okay. Mm. Now, few things that I've noted. Mm. I think you need a foot bath right here mm -hmm. with the disinfectant mm. so that when people like me are entering in, they don't bring germs from outside and taking them in. And then, you know, spray some disinfectant. But I like what you've done. Which one now? Any disinfectant, even Dettol, can work with the water. Mm. And uh, dusting mm. around the house, because mm. you can see all these, can bring viruses, you know, mm. the chicken. You'll hear them coughing. They're like humans, <coughs> because of the dust, and they can get some virus. Mm. And then, but I've seen you've done a very good job. You know, the Thank feeders you. and the drinkers are well placed. The laying boxes are good, fantastic. And then again, you need to put in some more ventilation so the air can move and circulate nicely and you get lots and lots of eggs. So do, do customers come here to buy from you? Sometimes, not, not always. Not always. Mm. And they do take their chicken with them and also the eggs. Yes. Do they pay a lower price because of that? What do they say to you? The fare is very high. Mm -hmm. The journey is too long yes. from here to the market. So they pass the charges of the fuel to you? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Let's go see what Caro has got. Let's go. Wow! This family has a real transport problem. First, Hannah's chicken. The buyers who come to the farm bring down the prices. Then, Porcelain and Zay get their produce to the market with water borders, donkey carts, matatus, you name it. Sometimes they even hire cars. We seriously need to do something about it. And I've got the perfect solution for them. Let's see if they like it. Oh, finally. Ah, Anna. At long last. Eh? Is that Shege? Hi. 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 How are you? Good, good. You're fine. You've really waited. Yes. Uh, meet Charles, mm -hmm. Posilida, Mze uh, Shege, yes. and Hannah. I have brought you this uh, Mahindra Tuk Tuk. Mm -hmm. If you cannot afford a big pickup or a big truck, you can have this. Yes. Why do you think this Tuk Tuk is going to help our farmers? Because one, Mr. Shege's milk will get to the market faster. Mm -hmm. And also more milk will be carried on the Tuk Tuk. Her nyanyas and hohos, and even her eggs and chicken. When you use the tuk-tuk, you go to the market one go, you finish your business and come back and do more. So this one, it means profits. The tuk-tuk is affordable. It's a diesel version engine, which the running cost is low. If we say that you want to buy tuk-tuk today, if you don't have the whole bag of money, we we'll go to either your circle, cooperative circle, or either to your bankers, whereby you'll pay us a small deposit, like 20%, and then the balance will be financed by the bank which is going to pay us and then you'll be paying monthly according to your agreement with the bank. Do you ask for security? We do not ask for security. Mm -hmm. No, because when you go to your cooperative circle, mm -hmm. they know you better than us. Okay. And they are the ones who are going to finance you. Mm -hmm. They pay us mm -hmm. and then we just register the vehicle and give it to you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now that she's asked about security, I'll ask about it in a different way. Yeah. Uh, when the farmers buy the, the tuk-tuk yeah. and uh, um, what warranty are you giving a warranty or when yeah. once they buy it it's in their hands and uh, we, that's call, we call it uh, uh, in simple language guarantee we guarantee the vehicle on the transmission that means the engine and uh, some parts for a year all up to a uh, uh, up to some 40 50,000 kilometers mm. yeah. uh, I see the tuk-tuk has three it's three-legged yeah is it balanced is it it's, it's a three wheeler and the, the two rear wheelers are being balanced by the front wheeler so it's completely balanced okay. yeah. what if it rains and there is rough rain on the road does the tuk tuk can it maneuver and get to wherever it needs it's to it will get? maneuver because it's a three wheeler it will maneuver mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> I can't. <laughs> we, are going to get the, we are going to make sure that you get the food as soon as possible. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Then I hear whether they can make me a loop. Our Mahindra Tuk Tuk has made a mark on our farmers. I hope they'll buy it because this is going to be useful in the chamber. 
Uh, yeah. John, yes. do you want to be a good farmer in the future? Like it, like, it, like your grandfather. Wow, <laughs> like that is father. so nice. That is that so is encouraging. Nice. We admire your experience. Yes. And you know you are very experienced. But have, have we taught you anything new? Have we added more knowledge to you? Uh, many, many, many. A lot. Even yeah. I cannot mention it because there are very many. Yes. Mm. yes. So, are you happy? Me? Yes. yes. Ah, I'm very. Really? Nobody, nobody else is happy that, than me. <laughs> <laughs> so, you two can get in touch with us by calling us through our Aishamba call center. Sign up to Aishamba to receive tips on farming, market prices and many more. You can also speak to a vet or a crop expert through our call center any day of the week. SMS the word JOIN to 21606 and we shall sign you up for free. Are you going to be calling us? Of course, yes. All Are the you? time? No, not really. Oh, <laughs> At least... After some time. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. That's stuck. still okay. It's still okay. Still good. Well, Carol. Our work here is done. And we'll see you in, in the, the next Shamba.